This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. On today's program, we're going to continue with our analysis of the satanic rituals and background behind the Super Bowl the other day, and not just focus in on Lady Gaga and what she represents, but look at what is happening behind the scenes in multiple Super Bowls and looking at what's going on behind the scenes, the sub-themes, the subliminals, if you will, behind major motion pictures, behind the largest hip-hop, rap, and music pop stars in the business, looking at what's going behind certain high, high high-level governmental officials, high-level people in the international banking families, and you see, you discover, unless you're blind as a bat, you see a theme, and the theme is occultism, witchcraft, Illuminati symbolism, occult symbolism, and Satanism, and satanic rituals. It's there. There's no way you can miss it, unless you are blind as a bat, or deliberately deaf, dumb, and blind, like those three monkeys. How is it that so many people who claim to believe in God's word, who claim to be Christians, are completely oblivious? They're blind to the reality going going on all around them, and they're also blind to the signs of the times happening all around them. I mean, they're just blind to what is blatantly obvious. Their kids get it. The kids know what the Illuminati symbols mean, some of them anyway. You know, I talk to people all the time who know what kind of books I write and videos I produce and conference messages I speak on. I meet people, young people all the time. By young people, I mean, you know, 16 years old to college age or got out of college. Let's just say 14 years old to um, 25 years old or 27 or 28 years old. I speak to people in that generational group all the time that get what the symbolism means. And they, they, they understand a lot of what's going on, primarily because of the Internet. And yet, you have people who are supposedly the ones that are supposed to be involved in this great spiritual battle between the forces of good and the forces of evil that is happening right now in our nation and across the world in what the God, what God's word says prophetically is the end times. But let's get back to Lady Gaga. Now, Lady Gaga, I had to analyze her, her performance because she chose to be low-key, which was probably wise, because this, this nation is, is, in, is just ready to, to catch fire right now. There are so many... Things that people, one word, one gesture, one symbol, people would go uh, ballistic. So I looked carefully at her performance and I saw that she she low-keyed the Illuminati aspects of it, the uh, satanic aspects of it. But nevertheless, she was chosen by the NFL to, to do the halftime performance. And when you look into her life and her biography and her previous music and her previous statements, just going back a couple of weeks, you see that this particular music artist, Lady Gaga, is deeply involved in the occult. She claims, as I understand it, to be possessed by some kind of spirit that motivates her, energizes her. She claims to be possessed or indwelt by a spirit. I don't know what her exact terminology is, but she claims some kind of uh, spirit is in her. Whether or not she means possession, I have no idea, but, but that should be a clue right there. And in her previous performances, she's always had, and her songs and her music videos, she's always had Illuminati, occultic, satanic symbolism. It's always been there. And we see that there's some really, I mean, when you look at her previous uh, performances, whether they are in the terms of music videos or whether they're in terms of conference performances, you're looking at some heavy-duty, dark, satanic, 
Illuminati, occultic, ritual stuff. So I did a little research. I've written about her in my books and Beyonce and their Illuminati satanic symbols. And I'll get into uh, what I wrote uh, in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, about this. But I did a little research on uh, Lady Gaga because obviously I'm not a big fan. In fact, I'm not a fan at all. I never have been a fan. And what was it? I was watching some musical awards ceremonies. I think it was two or three years ago. I can't remember. I believe Mick Jagger was performing at this music awards ceremony. And then Lady Gaga was performing, and she came out of an egg. Now, to most people, that doesn't mean a whole lot. It's relatively harmless. But I recognize that the egg goes way back to the ancient Babylonian occult religions known as Mystery Babylon. And the egg represents a symbol of Ishtar or Isis. And of course, we have to remember that whenever we're talking about Isis or Ishtar, um, that represents the goddess who originally was Semiramis, who was the, the wife of Nimrod, and Nimrod was the guy who built the Tower of Babel in ancient Babylon. And according to the historical legends, Nimrod uh, married this woman, Semiramis, who was either, according to some accounts, was, the, was a very beautiful prostitute in a, in a uh, brothel. According to some other uh, uh, historical accounts, she was both a madam and a prostitute in a house of prostitution. And according to some accounts, she was actually the mother as well as the wife and lover of Nimrod. Now, um, the, 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 the idea was that she was a highly immoral woman, not just because of that. Her just general lifestyle behind the scenes was extremely immoral. And so when Nimrod married uh, Semiramis, let's just go with the story that she was a, a hooker in a house of prostitution. So when he goes before the people of ancient Babylon, he's not going to tell the people of Babylon that his wife is a prostitute. So he tells, Nimrod tells the people of Babylon that his wife is a goddess and that Semiramis is a goddess. So Semiramis um, was having some marital problems with Nimrod and she was fooling around and things like that. And uh, then, I guess in a fit of rage, she murders Nimrod. And, uh, but then she also becomes pregnant at, at a time that it would have been uh, impossible for her to have been pregnant because Nimrod had been dead too long. Now, let's go back to Nimrod's death. So when Nimrod died, she couldn't obviously tell the people that she murdered her husband. So she created this, uh, this uh, mythology, this lie where she said, Nimrod has ascended into the heavens and, and, you know, look above. He has become Ra, the sun god. So Nimrod, according to Semiramis and what happened in ancient Babylon, became Ra, the sun god. And then as a way to cover up the fact that she got pregnant after the time period, where she couldn't possibly have been pregnant because uh, Nimrod, she murdered Nimrod, uh, and she was having an illicit affair. So uh, she couldn't tell the people of her illicit affair. So what she did is she said to the people that she got pregnated, she, not pregnated, sorry about that, folks. She got <laughs> impregnated uh, by a supernaturally, like kind of a counterfeit of the virgin birth. So uh, Semiramis said that she was supernaturally impregnated by using a phallic symbol. I won't get into that. You can read between the dots or whatever. And uh, it was uh, this phallic object enabled her to become supernaturally impregnant. Now, uh, impregnated. Now, that's a very important thing to grasp because you see throughout history, we have uh, what is called the Mystery Babylon religions, Mystery Babylon where all the demonic and occultic and Illuminati and satanic uh, religious systems are birthed out of ancient Babylon, which is 
the religion and the secrets and mysteries of ancient Babylon is known as Mystery Babylon. And you'll notice that when you move to the empire after empire, kingdom after kingdom of planet Earth, you will see that nations like uh, Egypt and many other nations, and you even see it in the United States of America uh, and in France and all over the world, in the Incan ruins, the Mayan ruins, all over the world you see <coughs> these large phallic symbol objects or monuments, these phallic symbol towers. And then you see these womb-like structures, like, for example, in Washington, D.C., you have the Washington Monument, which is clearly supposed to be intentionally a very large phallic symbol. And then you have it facing the Capitol Dome, which is intentionally designed to be a womb. You go to the Vatican and St. Peter's Basilica, you see a a uh, womb-like structure building, and you see a phallic symbol-type monument. You go into Central Park, and you see Cleopatra's Needle, a phallic symbol. You go into Egypt, and you see the phallic symbols and the, and the dome-like structures. So, as Semiramis, um, as these mystery Babylon religions are passed on from one nation or empire to another, they often change the names of the gods and the goddesses, but the, the essential religious or supernatural occultic practices remain the same. So that's where the origins of this phallic symbol, uh, womb, dome-like architecture and things like that come from. Semiramis, who tried to cover her tracks by saying she got impregnated supernaturally. Now, Semiramis, as we move on towards history, her name later changes. She's no longer the goddess Semiramis. She's now Isis and Ishtar and Aphrodite and Venus and Diana. Oh, and so many more. Um, the female statue uh, at the Statue of Liberty comes from Semiramis or Isis or Ishtar. Um, the uh, logo on Columbia Pictures uh, uh, feature films. That, that woman comes from uh, the goddess religion. And then Nimrod's name changes from Ra, and as empires rise and fall, Ra or Nimrod becomes Osiris, um, Hercules, Prometheus, Apollo, Abaddon, and uh, so many others, Poseidon. So these are part of the mystery Babylon occultic satanic Illuminati religion. So right now I'm looking at pictures of Lady Gaga, and she has that all-seeing eye uh, type of, uh, it's, it's like a, you've seen it on so many things. It's, they, there's a, a big cable company that has the symbol of the Egyptian eye, the eye of Isis. Um, it's usually in lettering. And here it's on Lady Gaga's face. And it represents this, this eye uh, of Isis or Ishtar, and and you've seen it many times, and then you see numerous pictures of her, and now she has a her her fingers holding it above her eye. She's flashing the symbol of this eye again, which also connects to the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, which is on the back of the U.S. dollar. When you go up the pyramid, uh, you'll see the all-seeing eye of Horus, which means the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. So again, on Lady Gaga, she's holding her fingers around her eye. This is occultic symbolism intentionally. And then you just see constant uh, uh, satanic Illuminati uh, symbols. And it's, it's just never ending in everything that she does. So why? why? Why does she do that? Because she's part of this cult, this Dionysian a cult, satanic cult, Illuminati cult. In one of her albums, she's uh, uh, she's singing to and, and you know worshiping Judas, the guy who betrayed Christ. Um, she believes in the principle of inversion, which means turning everything that's good upside down in a mockery of God, which is one of the basic principles of Satanism. Um, you see her. 
in a lot of her conferences, what appeared to be just uh, performances are in actuality Illuminati rituals and symbols. So this woman is clearly, clearly uh, immersed in Illuminati, satanic, occult religions. She's also, to what degree or another, I have no idea to what degree or another, but involved um, in this spirit cooking thing, which is where the uh, this artist, this female artist, who claims to be, by the way, a um, a high priestess in Satanism, uh, they paint with blood and uh, uh, semen and menstrual blood. I mean, it's it's grotesque, so I'm not going to continue on. That's a satanic ritual, and there's more to it, by the way, which I it's so offensive that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention it. So. We see this woman is immersed in this. Her songs are about this. She talks about this, just like Madonna. Madonna talks about this kind of stuff. She performs this kind of stuff, as do many other superstars. So the, the important thing to understand is that she um, is deeply involved in Satanism and the occult. No matter what she calls it or how she classifies it, she, uh, she represents that. And it's, it's what her life is all about. It's grotesque, it's, it's scary, and it's evil and satanic. So even though for her it was, it was uh, a mild performance, it was still based on the foundation of the occult, the Illuminati, and Satanism. And this is not the first time the NFL has allowed such a major star with Illuminati, satanic, occult beliefs to be there. I mean, they had... Uh, Katy Perry, same occultic, satanic, Illuminati stuff. Madonna, same occultic, satanic, uh, Illuminati stuff. Now, the question has to be asked. Um, I spoke to you yesterday. Even the New York Times commented in the New York Times magazine section, the cover uh, artwork of the New York Times magazine section. I think it was, it, it was released the day before the uh, Super Bowl was um, a giant um, all-seeing eye, you know, like like a pyramid, the pyramid shape with the all-seeing eye of Lucifer in it, except the pupil of the eyeball was a football. But they were talking about the New World Order and the Illuminati. Now, the New York Times, a secular paper, observed this because they were expecting perhaps more of in-your-face Illuminati, satanic, New World Order ritualism in Lady Gaga's performance. This is Paul McGuire. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. What what else is interesting on all the mainstream news media coverage of this uh, Lady Gaga and the conspiracy theories and fake news, that the mainstream media, this is an Australian uh Uh, mainstream media publication that I'm reading this article in. But every mainstream media article that I've read on Lady Gaga, on the Super Bowl, on the occult, on Satanism, on the Illuminati, they automatically label um, any, what they call alternative media, they say any alternative media which talks about um, things like Lady Gaga and Madonna and Katy Perry, etc., as uh, having to do with uh, satanic rituals or uh, Illuminati symbolism or the occult, that any alternative news site that makes those statements uh, has to fall under the category of fake news. So all the mainstream media are using uh, this Lady Gaga uh, occultic Illuminati stuff as a means to uh, label all alternative media as fake news. Because what the mainstream media is saying, if you dare to say that Lady Gaga is involved in the occult or Satanism or whatever, you have to be fake news. If you dare to say that Madonna or Katy Perry or whoever, or Beyonce, uh, that they're involved in the occult or Satanism or whatever, then you are fake news. Now, the problem with saying that, and I'm going to be very blunt, because a lie is a lie. The problem with the mainstream media 
accusing any alternative media of being fake news is completely ridiculous because with a minimal amount of research, I'm talking about if you spent an hour objectively looking on the internet and objectively doing your homework, you would see without any shadow of the doubt that there is blatant, in-your-face, indisputable Illuminati symbolism, occultic uh, symbolism, and satanic symbolism in the performances of uh, just some of the people I mentioned. Yet, that's supposed to be fake news. No, no, that's not fake news. Seeing obvious evidence, listen carefully, observing obvious evidence of documented videos, photos, statement, and music of Lady Gaga, Madonna, Katy Perry, and others, Beyonce, where they are obviously celebrating uh, and using occult rituals and symbols and then saying that it doesn't exist and that it's not true, which is what the mainstream media is saying, they are lying. That is a flat-out outrageous lie. And outrageous because these these are not like, you know, symbols that people are debating about, whether they're occultic or not, or the statements or the phrases. These aren't symbols that, that are a matter of debate. The pentagram is universally known as a satanic uh, a symbol of Satan for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's not debatable. That's a fact. The the, the symbol of uh, Isis and Ishtar is a, is a symbol. Uh, when, um, um, what's his name? The uh, husband and uh, manager, Jay-Z, of Beyonce. When I was sitting at a Dodgers baseball game about two years ago, and uh, Jay-Z was in you know some fancy seat at the Dodgers stadium, and the camera did a close-up of Jay-Z, and he gives first of all the with the with the with his hand the the symbol of the devil the devil sign, and, and that is universally recognized as, as the devil sign. And then he has a T-shirt which prominently says, which you could see on camera, millions of people saw it on television. It says, "Do what thou wilt," and that is a direct quote from the famous Satanist Aleister Crowley, six six six, who was known as the Great Beast. So he's flashing the symbol of Satan with his hands, and on his uh, shirt it says, Do what thou wilt, which is a motto of the satanic uh, leader, Aleister Crowley, who was known as the Beast, or 666. It's not like, you know, you have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. It's in-your-face occultic symbolism. And so not to call it what it is, you're, you are the fake news. You see, the mainstream media is the fake news. The main, mainstream media, media is, is part of the big lie. They're part of the big cover-up. So when we see pictures of Madonna or Lady Gaga or all the others that are at these uh, uh, Super Bowl ceremonies, music awards, they're just bursting with occultic, satanic symbolism. There's no, you know, there's no debate about it. And they're in your face saying stuff. And they're using words and symbols, which your kids understand. So for the mainstream media to lie about the obvious, it's like when the British held the Olympic ceremony. The British uh, uh, Olympics was bursting with all kinds of Illuminati, occult, satanic symbolism. And anybody who, who has done a minimal amount of research into this knows that it's it was in your face Illuminati symbolism. I mean, even, even the New York Times it, it satirically admitted it. So for the mainstream media to deny it, they are part of the lie. They are part of the spiritual darkness. They also cover up, the mainstream media also covers up all kinds of stories about high-level governmental officials involved in Satanism. Going back uh, 20 years ago, uh, to uh, our contemporary uh, time period. Uh, the mainstream media is constantly covering up stories because, again, they are part of the lie. They are part of the spiritual darkness. And that is very serious stuff, that the mainstream media is part of the lie and part of the spiritual darkness. 
Now, as we said, um, Lady Gaga somewhat low-keyed it on the Illuminatic, uh, Illuminati and Satanic symbolism. But what 100 plus million live viewers saw um, on at the Super Bowl, the one of the opening parts of her uh, um, performance, there was a large Egyptian sun disc, uh, a ritual magic symbol, which covered the entire stage during uh, her halftime performance. And uh, you look at it, and it's, it's this Egyptian symbolism going back to Ishtar or Isis. And then if you go back to another previous Super Bowl, you see Madonna's Mark of the Beast uh, dancing stage, where you see literally as you look into the, the, the platform upon which she's singing and performing in, you see uh, uh, a, a satanic symbols in the center of Madonna's NFL stage. And then you see Madonna wearing uh, a Baphomet uh, costume uh, and uh, Nazi swastikas. And then you see the Eye of Sauron, the all-seeing evil eye of power, projected onto the set while Madonna dances and worships to the demonic power. And you can see the Masonic symbol there very clearly where Madonna's standing. And then you see um, uh, she's literally singing uh, a song that shows uh, in the performance, uh, there's this giant all-seeing eye floating on the stage. And uh, then you see a, a picture with Beyonce performing, uh, where she is uh, uh, flashing the Illuminati pyramid symbol. And, um, I mean, it's just evil. Now I'm looking at one with Katy Perry's... Uh, see, the, the symbolism between Madonna, Beyonce, uh, Lady Gaga, and Katy Perry, they're, they're using similar symbolism. So here I'm looking at Katy Perry's Super Bowl halftime show. And there's a gigantic, gigantic, massive all-seeing eye looking at the stage. And then you see her in this Egyptian garb going back to uh, ancient Egypt and Isis and stuff like that. So this is demonic, hardcore evil. There's nothing, there, there's, no, there's no question about it. So to call it something else. And then as I glance on all the, uh, when I go through Google and I look at all the uh, search engine results, it's just literally hundreds and hundreds of mainstream news media stories listed that all begin with a title like Lady Gaga, Alternative Right, Fake News, Conspiracy Theory. But it's not a conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's the truth. That's, that's the point. And they know it's the truth. They know it's the truth, but because they're owned by just six corporations, they have to do the marching orders of their masters, and that is the globalist elite, many of whom which are involved in the Illuminati and things like that. And let me add one other thing to it. The further proof of all this is that when you look at the corporate logos, and, and for obvious reasons I can't go through a list of corporate logos and their names, but a, a huge percentage, I would probably say, the larger percentage of major corporate logos that you would be familiar with all involved Illuminati uh, symbols, whether it's the all-seeing eye or lightning bolts or all kinds of things. It's cleverly worked in the artwork, the, the uh, uh, Queen of Heaven, so on and so forth. And the Queen of Heaven, by the way, goes all the way back to Semiramis or Isis or Ishtar. So it's very interesting to see how this uh, satanic uh, movement is being promoted by um, the, the major stars. Now, a question has to be asked, and this is simply a question, not an accusation. It is a matter of fact that the NFL, uh, not the NFL itself, but the Super Bowl time that the NFL sponsors during Super Bowl, let's put it that way. During Super Bowl, there is, I believe it is the largest uh, 
child sex trafficking event in the world. So that simply means that more little girls and little boys are being sexually molested and abused, I guess, before, after, or during the Super Bowl. I'm I'm assuming it's in taking places and houses and hotels and stuff like that. I, I, I mean, I don't know where it's going on. It's not going on in the Super Bowl, uh, to my knowledge, but it's the the world's largest uh, sex trafficking event. Now, you can't blame specifically the Super Bowl or the NFL specifically for that, but one has to wonder why the NFL is so comfortable with having performer after performer uh, give these ceremonies that involve satanic symbolism occult symbolism, Illuminati symbolism, and and satanic ritual symbolism. I mean, wouldn't you think that if you were trying to market football as a somewhat, it used to be, somewhat a family event. I mean, it was never entirely a family event. Let's not kid ourselves, but I, I can't tell you how many churches, and I'm not blaming churches for this, but you know, after the church service, they would have a Super Bowl party. They probably still do. It's very common. Well, you know, what do you do? Sit around there and have snacks and whatever and watch, you know, blatant, hardcore satanic symbolism being performed in front of the uh, Super Bowl halftime show and pretend that it's not what it is? <laughs> Listen, it is what it is. It is what it is unless you don't know what it is. And that comes from not being educated and taking the time to inform yourself about the reality not the fiction, not the paranoia, not the conspiracy theory, the reality of what's going on. So on one hand, you have the, uh, the uh, fake, the real fake news, which is the mainstream media. They're the ones that George Orwell was really warning about. They flipped it upside down and they make it sound like, gee, Orwell was con- concerned about Donald Trump. I mean, come on, man. I read 1984 by Orwell in third grade. It has nothing to do with Donald Trump. It has to do with a media that becomes the thought police for Big Brother. Orwell was warning about the mainstream media. That's what he was really doing. They've flipped it. Now, the other thing is they deliberately don't do their research. I believe many of them know because it's all over the place. You'd have to be a complete moron not to know. So you you pretend not to know, but everybody knows the truth about what this symbolism means. I mean, it's in all the movies, man. I mean, really, not, let's just forget about Lady Gaga. It's in all the movies, the same symbolism. It's in, it's in all the music and the uh, videos, the music videos, the same symbolism. They know it's a cult. They know it's satanic. They know it's uh, Illuminati symbolism. But instead, they're lying and saying that's a conspiracy theory. And... The average American, I don't know what the average American thinks, but I can tell you this, the average evangelical Christian probably doesn't have a clue and would say it's a conspiracy theory. So they're in the same boat as the uh, mainstream media. And all of it could be solved if if just the average Christian or average Christian leader would just spend a little bit of time doing their homework instead of shouting conspiracy theory like a squawking parrot that's starving. Conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory actually do a little homework, and then you find out the truth about all this. So, in in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, I dealt with this, and I deal with it in Mass Awakening and the brand new book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017, and I deal with it in the day the dollar died. And... Um, This is what I I want you to grasp in this um, first book, A Prophecy of the Future of America. I deal with this global secretive elite, which is a global secretive occult elite that secretly rule the world. That may be a big plate of food to put in front of somebody, but it's true. So the the reality is that... um, These people have ruled the world through what is called Mystery Babylon that began in ancient Babylon at the Tower of Babel. Now, if you want thorough research on that, 
with impeccable documentation. I wrote a book called The Babylon Code, which is still, after about a year since it came out, is still one of the number one selling books on prophecy in the world. And I wrote The Babylon Code with my uh, co-author, Troy Anderson, a Pulitzer Prize-nominated journalist. And we document impeccably the, the reality of Babylon and the occult and Satanism. For anybody who's suspicious, the documentation is impeccable. And then um, before the Babylon Code came out, I wrote a number of books that de dealt with this issue from a different perspective. And I talked about <clears throat> the, uh, the role of the Illuminati, for example, in uh, the founding of America. America was founded by strong Bible-believing Christians, and, and the Bible has its imprint all over our Constitution and Bill of Rights and the formation of our society. But look, I'm going to be very blunt. We have some so-called, well, I don't, I don't know if they're reputable or not. I don't know, I don't know what they are, so let's, the jury's out. But we have some uh, uh, organizations, let's that put it that way, educational ministries, I don't know what they call themselves, that, that supposedly equip Christians and pastors, etc., about the true Christian origins of our nation. And I have found their research to be an, of an enormous benefit uh, for myself personally in understanding the Christian origins of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the Founding Fathers. And the, and, and the, and the research is very good. I'm thinking of one organization. I don't want to name their name. I use this organization as a resource. Most of their stuff is credible. But I have one big problem with them, and that is <clears throat> I don't see any serious discussion in their research of the Freemasonry, Masonic, and Illuminati uh, um, membership or, 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 or uh, affiliation with their founding fathers, which is an historical fact. I don't see any serious research or discussion of Illuminati Masonic, Freemasonic influence in our founding documents and in our government. And I mean, if it's there, I haven't found it. And I think that organization, despite its excellent work in other areas, is doing uh, the Christian community a great disservice by ignoring it. Because all you have to do is walk into Washington, D.C. and stand there in the middle of the uh, Washington Monument, a giant phallic symbol, and the um, White House, which is a giant womb-like structure, and look at all the other architectural and uh, uh, sculptures and paintings and so on and so forth, they're all from Freemasonry, okay? So it's obvious. I mean, you can see pictures of George Washington wearing a Masonic uh, apron, not because he was cooking dinner, because it was part of a ritual, a Masonic ritual. There are paintings with George Washington, our first president, um, who was involved or had to be a member of Freemasonry. I mean, it doesn't take, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure that out. Because I'm sure you can't conduct a Masonic ritual wearing a Masonic apron without being a member of a certain rank in Freemasonry. So he was a Mason. But this particular Christian or group ignores that. Now, I, I you know, I explain this in my book because it really bothered me because I, I, for years I used this and I continue to use this organization, by the way, because despite that major flaw, and it's huge, but at least in the other areas, I find them to be very accurate. So I still use this organization as a resource, resource and I would still recommend them. But I had to go out and do my own research um, about the Masonic Illuminati uh, Freemasonry beliefs of our founding fathers. So in my book, A Prophecy of the Future of America, and by the way, this is why we're trying to educate people. We have to get people up to speed as to what's happening. Do you think, I mean, do you really think it's an accidental thing? Now, the people that listen to my show, for the most part, I believe, are people who, by nature, by God's grace or whatever, I would say the vast majority of those of you who listen to my show on a regular basis 
You, you think outside of the box. You think with your right brain. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to me. So you're not the typical person who thinks like a program pigeon. You think outside the box. Now, um, I, I'm reading this. I'm reading my own book here. I'm getting confused. I thought it was somebody else's book. This happens to me all the time. Okay, so this is page 62 of A Prophecy of the Future of America. And, and the, what, getting back to what I was trying to say till I lapsed in consciousness, and that is that we have to get people educated as fast as possible. Otherwise, they don't know the true nature of the spiritual warfare that we're in right now in the United States of America and around the world. You know, I was writing uh, something today where I talked about the absolute necessity it is for us to make disciples of all na nations. And I was doing research into key, high, high up, new age leaders, etc. Uh, working on something that I'm not ready to discuss publicly yet. But these, these men, who are brilliant, by the way, um, understand the nature and the power of, of when you put a worldview or you put a belief system into a mass population, beginning with individuals, how powerful that is. They understand it. Now, these people aren't Christians. And they even use the word worldview. Now, the vast majority of Christians I know don't even know what the world word worldview means, including Christian pastors, which I'm not trying to pick on. But it represents the... Uh, my intention is not to, to pick on them. My, my intention is to illustrate by example, the tremendous need we have to educate people and to get them up to speed, even in Christian leadership positions, because the average Christian doesn't even know what the world, 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 worldview means. But these people who are in the process of reshaping the thinking of our entire planet, they use the term worldview. They know what it means. They know how important it is. Christians don't even know what the word means. But a worldview is what Jesus Christ was talking about when he said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. What that means is teach people in nations all across the world, including your own, teach them how the truth of God's word from Genesis to Revelation applies to every area of our lives. Not just the so-called spiritual areas like Bible study and prayer and worship. I mean, those are important things. I'm not minimizing that. But that's not the only thing that truth is supposed to, to influence. True truth, a term Francis Schaeffer coined, is all of the truth from Genesis to Revelation. God's word speaks truth to, for example, economics, science, culture, society, family, marriage, sexuality, government, politics, nutrition, and we can go on and on and on. God's truth speaks to all those areas. So when we're making disciples of all nations, what we're really doing is we're teaching them in an effective way how to, to take all this truth in the Bible and, and connect it to their real world, connect it to the realm of economics, or family, or whatever. See, that's called a worldview. But people will either have an atheistic or humanistic or New Age worldview, because that's how they've been programmed deliberately, or if we as Christians obey Jesus Christ and make disciples of all nations, we will effectively communicate and teach people simply how to have a biblical worldview so they can be set free in every area of their life, including economics, by the way. People are in economic slavery a lot of times because they're believing a satanic lie in the form of a lying economic theory. And that's why I feel the need is so, so intense and so great to get going and use every mechanism, every medium at our disposal to not only in this nation, but in nations all across the world, to immediately, full speed ahead, make disciples of all nations. That means teach effectively and quickly. Capture their imagination first. 
a biblical worldview in all areas and communicate it to people all over the world immediately. Because if we do this immediately, then we can prevent catastrophe, crisis, revolution, violence, bloodshed, murder, rape, torture. Do you understand? In addition, by, by um, teaching people a biblical worldview, we can heal families, marriages. We can teach people how to be set free sexually. We can teach people how to uh, navigate economically. And we can provide peace where there's warfare and social injustice, etc. Look at all the riots just in the United States of America alone, but they're happening worldwide. Look at the anger and hatred uh, uh, among those who are not for Trump, the millennials and those that would call themselves liberals or progressives or whatever. And uh, there's hatred that goes the other way too, all right? But if the masses of people in the United States were taught a biblical worldview. Now, that, that's, that's more than just salvation in Christ. Salvation in Christ is the most important thing, and we're commanded to do that also. Go into all the world and preach the gospel effectively. We need to win souls to Jesus Christ. But we also need to explain the Bible in understandable terms, which is called a biblical worldview. If people really understood a biblical worldview, which is not complicated because it was communicated to them effectively, guess what would happen? There wouldn't be these riots. People wouldn't be burning down cars, smashing in windows, shooting people, starting riots, burning down neighborhoods, threatening to assassinate the president, threatening to blow up the White House. See, this would all disappear. Do you, do you know why this is this, this explosion of hatred, this explosion of rage and violence is happening in America and around the world right now? It is a direct, listen to me very, very carefully. The explosion of violence, rage, anarchy is a direct result of the programming, yes, programming, or the education slash programming that many generations of young Americans have now received through public education, through the media, and through the entire educational system, including all the way through the highest levels of college, they have been programmed, they have been indoctrinated to believe a faulty worldview based on lies. First of all, they've been taught that man is an animal here by accident, and that there is no such thing as right or wrong. And from there, it all goes downhill. That's why you have professors uh, this was at the University of Berkeley. It was pathetic. This woman was screaming out of, you know, she was just like, she lost it, man. She just totally lost it on the street corner. She's screaming, incoherent. She's a rageaholic. And then she goes, I'm a professor. I'm a professor. She should have kept, she should have kept her mouth shut because after that ranting and raving, after that rageaholic seizure, it would have been wise not to announce to everybody that how dare, her exact words were, how dare you, how dare you, I'm a professor. It would have been better to have cut and run and not said that because that was like giving herself her own death sentence. You're a professor and you're acting like a total moron out of control. See, she has been brainwashed with communistic ideas, humanistic ideas, and she has no answers but a pure animalistic, emotionalist rage. If we communicate a biblical worldview effectively to the college students, to the high school students in America and around the world, then they act differently. But if you program kids from a young age to believe they're an animal that just evolved by accident, then don't be uh, surprised when they act like animals and do violent, crazy things. You see, this is why we have to reach these people as fast as we can with every media at our disposal. And for me, the head of this ministry, it means launching our television production studio immediately, full blast and international, finishing the studio, buying the television broadcast quality cameras, the air conditioning, the lights, the setting, hiring the help to produce a first-class program, expanding the radio outreach ministry, which you're listening to now, the Paul McGuire Report enhancing the radio ministry, enhancing the website, enhancing the social media, begin live streaming of our regular Paradise Mountain Church meeting, 
expand the regular Paradise Mountain Church meetings. Hire desperately needed staff, for crying out loud, because, you know, we need it, okay? And we need to do this as, so as soon as possible because we're in a battle for the hearts and souls of mankind. And if we don't win them with, with a biblical worldview, Satan or Lucifer will, will win them because Satan or, or Lucifer... Satan and Lucifer are, they are it's one and the same person. Obviously, you knew that. But Satan or Lucifer, he is a master of image, media, presentation, visual arts, music, communication. Read his biography in the book of Isaiah and the book of uh, Ezekiel. He is a mastermind when it comes to communication. That's why the word says, beware the guiles or the schemes or the strategies of the devil. He knows how to manipulate human consciousness with images, sound bites. That's why we have to launch our television program. And I need those of you that are serious about winning this spiritual warfare to get in the game and pray for us like there is no tomorrow, at least temporarily down here on earth. And then ask the Lord how you can help us acquire the equipment we need in terms of television and running this ministry so we can tear down these satanic strongholds and set people free with a biblical worldview. We need to move aggressively into television and all the other media outreaches that I talked about. But we can only do that with people like you having the boldness and faith in the Lord to ask God, what can I do to help? And then give whatever amount the Lord tells you to give. It's just that simple. Trusting, of course, that he will supply your needs. And you can do that by going to paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. And another thing you can do, this is so simple. Spread the message of these programs. Pray over them and just send them to people, not just to anybody, send them to people that you feel need to hear this message or are open to it. And pray about it and maybe give them an introductory uh, sentence or two as to why they should listen to it. And you can do that by going to paulmcguire.us where you'll see a whole list of social media apps that you or anybody can use to play archives of the programs or to play these programs anywhere, anytime. Because we are in information warfare. You see, either the truth goes out or the mainstream media will continually lie and as they lie, lying is a, is a force of spiritual darkness. As they lie, the satanic agenda is furthered. Because it's a flat-out lie that to tell people, oh, <clears throat> these musical artists, it's a conspiracy theory that they're into Satanism and witchcraft and the Illuminati and the occult. That's a flat-out lie. The kids know it's a lie. But there's people who don't. Some, some, a lot of Christian leaders don't know. It's a lie. They think they agree with the mainstream media. They think it's a conspiracy theory. They think that people like me, that the people like me, I'm searching for the right pronunciation, that, that I am a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm a human being that's halfway intelligent, emphasize operative word, halfway intelligent, reasonably intelligent, who thinks, who, who like you, I think outside the box. That's all. That's the only thing that separates me from the person who's in, in the twilight zone of total denial reality is I actually hit the on switch to the brain that God gave me. It doesn't take a genius, a rocket scientist, to figure out where, where the on switch is in your brain and actually use it. So, you know, that old expression, but walks like a duck, talks like a duck, <clears throat> whatever, however it ends. If the musical performer or performers on the stage, on the music video, in their performance or in their lyrics, is using satanic symbols, satanic uh, mottos and, and mantras, is wearing satanic uh, garments, is, is using Luciferian or Illuminati symbolism all over the place, guess what? They're into Illuminati stuff, they're into the occult, and they're into Satanism. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. So you, if you just turn the on button in your brain, you'd be able to figure that out for yourself. I'm not talking about you, the listeners of the Paul McGuire Report. I'm talking to all the people who, who are out there in the dead pool 
They live in an alternative reality called it's worse than the Twilight Zone. Because why it's worse than the Twilight Zone is it's that ethereal world somewhere between uh, truth and lie. And it's where a lot of evangelicals hide out. I believe the Bible is a little satire here. I'm giving you a heads up. So don't, I'm using satire here to communicate. You may not like it, but satire historically has been used as a as a as a method of waking people up and communicating truths. <clears throat> so you may not like it, but that's my my motive. I'm using satire, okay? So I'm not mean. It's an act of love because the Bible says, "Love your neighbor as yourself." So if you really love your love your neighbor, you're going to want to set your neighbor free. You're not going to want to see your neighbor's children get demonically possessed or their lives destroyed, getting caught up in some satanic thing. Have you ever seen somebody who's been demon possessed and looked 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 at a demon possessed person in the eyes? I don't. I don't. You know, like promote that kind of thing, and I don't like. Like, look for that kind of thing? I really don't. I don't even hardly talk about it. But in the course of my ministry, um, I have had to deal with demons. And and they are evil. Uh, and you can see it in the eyes of somebody who's demon-possessed. You know it's not their eyes. They're inha- the people are inhabited by something, a spirit. And it's an unclean spirit. And it's foul. And I've seen people that were ready to kill themselves because they were that because they had done things that opened themselves up to this demonic spirit. So you don't want that happening. That can happen too, as I've said in earlier programs, where a nation chooses by its wholesale rejection of God to welcome in the spirit of Antichrist. And the next thing you're, you're asking yourself, why are all these people walking around with guns and swastikas and, and skull and bones, uh, belt buckles and uh, SS lightning bolts, and, and hauling people away to uh, get a shower in a big camp. Well, remember, the Third Reich was a occult, Luciferian, satanic, secret society first, and a political uh, organization second. And everybody high up in Adolf Hitler's Third Reich was a practicing Satanist and a member of the occult, including Hitler himself. That's what happens when you open up a nation to the spirit of Antichrist. So it's very very important that you stop this with the individual, which inquires spiritual warfare. So if you love your neighbor as yourself, then you would <clears throat> not live in uh, this twilight world between truth and non-truth. You would see reality uh, because you, your eyes are clear and sound. And that is possible. Jesus Christ can do that to anybody, any church, any Christian leader, and to you, me, or anybody who asks for it. You can see reality clearly. Here, I'll give you an example from a passage of Scripture. But before I get into that, I want to remind you that when you look at, uh, you do research on Lady Gaga's uh, videos and stuff, you'll see that in a lot of it, she's wearing like Nazi uniforms, Nazi belt buckles, and with the Nazi uniforms uh, and costumes that Lady Gaga wears in her musical performances, you see all the occult Nazi symbols like the swastikas and the lightning bolts and stuff. So Lady Gaga is totally aware of of the occult satanic nature of the Third Reich and chooses to, to flaunt it in her musical performances. Now, why is it that so many people can't see the obvious, especially Christians? who have been called by God to, to preach the gospel of salvation and make disciples of all, all nations. Well, Jesus Christ was speaking to the Laodicean church in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 22. And um, Jesus was rebuking the um, Laodicean church because your works... That you are, I, I know your works, that you are neither cold or hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. 
I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Okay, so the the big criticism that Jesus Christ had with the Laodicean church is it was self-satisfied. It, it thought it was it thought it was true. It, it thought it was living the spirit-filled life like a lot of evangelical churches. But the bottom line in reality, according to Jesus, it was neither on fire for God or or cold and antagonistic towards God. It was in that middle area. It was lukewarm. And Jesus said, I wish you were either like totally against me or totally on fire for me. Because you're lukewarm, I want to vomit you out of my mouth. Now, that, that fits the spiritual uh, category of a disturbingly large percentage of churches, evangelical churches in America. They just kind of like go with the flow, which means they're lukewarm. And notice that because their spiritual state was lukewarm, that they were naked spiritually. That means they were not clothed with power from on high. See, when you're clothed with power from on high, the Holy Spirit, you can't be naked. You're clothed with power from on high. But when you deny or reject or distance yourself from a supernatural relationship with Christ, which would allow you to be clothed with power from on high, then you become lukewarm. Thus, becoming lukewarm produces the spiritual condition of nakedness or powerlessness. And if by faith you drew closer to Christ, you could be no longer naked. You could be clothed with power from on high. And that speaks to you as an individual as well as churches uh, at large. And and God says that... um, he want, Jesus says he wants to anoint your eyes with eye salve so that you may see. So one of the byproducts, listen carefully, one of the byproducts of being spiritually lukewarm is you become blind to the obvious reality all around you. You become spiritually blind. So let's do the math real quick. Number one, if you are spiritually lukewarm, the result is you can't see which means you're, you're blind to the reality all around you. You're blind. You see, when people can see, they don't walk into doors, etc., because they can see what's obvious. They can see what's right before them. But when people are blind, they don't know what's right before them. They can't see the reality all around them. They're blind. And so when you're spiritually lukewarm, it also means that you're spiritually blind. And that's why these evangelicals and the evangelical leaders, not all of them, but some, can't see the obvious, like what we're talking about with the occult and the Illuminati and Satanism and Luciferianism in all aspects of our society. And they, and they say these stupid things like it's a conspiracy theory. Well, you know what? When, they, when somebody says to you like that, it's a conspiracy theory, what they're really saying is, without realizing it, they're really saying, I'm naked because... When, when you're lukewarm, Jesus Christ also said, you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So when says, somebody says, oh, that's a conspiracy theory, what they're really saying is, I'm miserable, wretched, poor, blind, and naked. That's what they're saying. They're saying I'm blind. I can't see the obvious. That's why they call what you see a conspiracy theory, because they can't see the obvious. They'll walk right into the door. But Jesus still loves them. And and he gives them an opportunity to repent. And Jesus still loves you, and he gives you an opportunity to repent. And he says that if you'll come to him and repent of your lukewarmness, he will clothe you with power from on high, and he will anoint your eyes with the eye salve of the Holy Spirit so that you can see again. And when you can see again, you'll be able to see the obvious, which is this incredible spiritual warfare between Satan and Lucifer, or Satan or Lucifer, and the demons and the principalities and the satanic warfare raging against Christians, Jesus Christ, and God's angels. It's going on all around us. And then 
you you won't be like like clueless. You'll be you'll be on fire for God, and you'll be set free. So this is this is what has to happen with the church right now because you see symbolism, art, pictures, images, the style or characteristics of musical performances, the contents of movies, film, television, artwork, etc. These are all alternative, um, no, I didn't mean that, like alternative right and all that garbage that the, that, that the mainstream lying media made up. They're all methods of expressions of what's going on in the human soul and consciousness. We have words that can reflect what's going on in the human soul and consciousness, but then we have art, and by art, I mean things like music, symbolism, pictures, etc. Well, if you're saying nothing but the demonic, nothing but the satanic, nothing but violence, nothing but pornography, nothing but lewdness and sexual perversion of every kind, nothing but cruelty and animalistic impulses going all around you. That That's a real clue to anybody who has eyes to see that that man and women and children and a nation is becoming spiritual, spiritually darker and spiritually darker. And And even though the darkness has never conquered the light, it requires that those that call themselves Christians no longer hide their lights under a bushel or hide their lights from people from seeing it, but they place their the light, the light of Christ, out in the open because the darkness has never conquered the light. What we have in America right now, what we have in the European Union right now, what we have in Australia, New Zealand, and many other continents right now, what we have really is not enough lights shining. Not enough that life is shining. That's what we have. And because not enough light is shining, the darkness and the armies of darkness are raging. Okay? The, de- the demons are coming out. The spirit of Antichrist is attempting to penetrate nations like America. You see anarchy, immorality, lawlessness, violence, perversion, insanity of every kind. That is symptomatic of uh, a spirit of Antichrist attempting to to gain control over a nation, not just America, but many other nations. When you begin to celebrate openly, when you begin to worship, because that's what a star is, you worship a star. A star is an idol. Rock and roll star, pop star, hip-hop star, they're idols. You worship them. When you begin to worship stars that glorify and worship Satan, and immorality, and perversion, and, and, and Luciferianism, and the occult, and evil of every kind. It's because you yourself have given yourself over to the demonic. The demonic is real. Now, this nation, and what happens historically, whenever any nation throughout history has given itself over willingly to the powers of darkness or to the demonic, all hell breaks loose, and eventually that nation will will undergo a a violent or a peaceful revolution in which an Antichrist, not the Antichrist, capital A, an Antichrist, small a, dictator, totalitarian leader, will rise in power and with cruelty and satanic uh, methodologies, he will oppress and rule over the people. That's what's lying ahead for America if we're not careful. And anybody with any spiritual discernment at all Anybody who has studied their Bible, if you just studied the Bible alone from Genesis to Revelation, and you read books like Kings and Judges, you would see that this is a a reoccurring formula in man's history. And so we're at the crossroads here in America, and those of you in the European Union, you know that, don't you? I mean, it's judgment day for us and for you. And it's important to understand the sign of the times and to really understand how to read the clock of the signs of the times accurately, not impose your own bias on an obvious uh, measurement of time prophetically. You don't impose your own bias on it. You allow the truth of God's word to speak clearly for itself, and there, then you will know where you are in terms of the spectrum of time, which we call the signs of the times, prophetically. 
So these, these occultic performers and what they represent. And by the way, it, it goes beyond just the occultic performers. It, 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 it includes things like, like the, the glorification of, of, uh, 50, of movies like Fifty Shades of Grey or whatever it is. And, and, and just the incredible darkness in all these supernatural thrillers or whatever they call them, horror movies or whatever. Even episodic television is just like, it's like drinking from a sewer. It all, I mean, there's scenes that are put in there that are not necessary. I don't like watch a whole lot of it. In fact, I don't, I don't subscribe to HBO or Showtime. Because there's nothing I want to see. I mean, every once in a while, there's something I want to see. But I refuse to put through the, to go through the trash can and pay for it. So there was some big uh, new TV show that all the critics rave about and supposed to be really popular. So out of curiosity, because we our, our, our satellite TV gives us a, a promotional period every so often of a week or two, of free programming. So you get to watch HBO or Showtime or whatever for free, and, and then you either subscribe to it or they turn it back off. So so we watch this one program that's supposed to be a good program, and I won't even tell you what the opening scene was. This is this is not this is not this is not supposed to be some word program. This is supposed to be a critically acclaimed, you know, drama or something. And I won't even tell you what the opening scene was. Because the opening scene was so disgusting so vile and so vulgar that if I told you, many of you would not be shocked. I think you'd be shocked at this. I think even the most cynical among you would be shocked at what the opening scene consisted of. It, no, you would be shocked. And I, I know a lot of you think you're worldly, you're sophisticated. Look, I was shocked. I was shocked because I'd never seen this kind of thing used as a teaser, even an innuendo. I mean, this was like sick. But you see, the name of the game is to desensitize because what we all thought was sick and really evil and perverted, you know, 10, 20 years ago, we're like frogs getting boiled to death. We don't even blush. I mean, the really scary thing is what I thought was intensely offensive. I mean, that's an understatement. Would I find it intensely offensive 20 years from now? Because we get desensitized if we're not careful. So it all comes down to one thing. See, it all comes, it all, it comes back to the same um, geographic space or point in, in reality. It all comes back to the same place, always. It always comes back to the same place. And you know where it comes back to? It always comes back to the reality of God's existence. And by God, I mean the person, the infinite personal living God of the universe, the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and Kings and Kings. It always comes back to this reality that the God of the Bible exists and that you exist and I exist because we are the children of God. And if we have come to some place in our life where we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we became born again by placing our faith in the saving message of Jesus Christ and inviting Christ to forgive us of our sins through his blood, because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, and then we invited Jesus Christ into our lives to make us born again. And by faith, we were born again by the Spirit of God, taking up residence in our inner man or woman, regenerating us from within, and we became new creatures in Christ Jesus, or new men or new women in Christ Jesus. So it comes back to that reality. You exist, I exist, and God exists. And so then there's the external reality all around us, in our families, at jobs, in the neighborhood, in the nation, and around the world. And when we observe, and it's hard to observe it accurately because we're always looking at it through this distorted prism called the mass media, 
we see that it's obvious that the spiritual world is getting darker. The question is, is it getting darker randomly or is it getting darker intentionally? I want to suggest to you that it is truth to say that the world is getting darker and darker spiritually, intentionally, by design, by an orchestrated plan. You see that in the Bible. You, you see it all over the Bible. Because there is a, an opponent, an adversary that we all deal with called the devil or Lucifer, who is leading a revolt of one-third of the, of the angels, who are fallen angels, against the throne room of God in an, in an attempt to uh, implement a regime change where Lucifer becomes God and he wants to be worshipped as God, which he will attempt when he inhabits the Antichrist in the seven-year tribulation period and three and a half years into the tribulation period when the rebuilt temple in, is, in Jerusalem is rebuilt, the Antichrist will set himself up to be worshipped as God in the rebuilt temple. And this will uh, cause the latter part of the three and a half year tribulation period to kick in, which is called uh, the, the wrath of God or the great wrath of God. And then you see the tribulation judgments escalate in intensity as the world is being prepared for its final moment, which is the second coming of Jesus Christ as Lord of Lords and King of Kings to planet Earth. Jesus Christ will return to planet Earth at the end of the tribulation period with the armies of heaven. And he will descend upon Jerusalem, which will become the new capital of planet Earth and co-rule with King David. And he will uh, sentenced, sentence all those who accepted the mark of the beast, all those who worship the Antichrist, all those who worship the false prophet, as well as all the demonic beings that were following Lucifer, all of those people collectively will be sentenced into the abyss and then finally into hell for all eternity to suffer eternal torment. And Jesus will rule and reign planet Earth for a thousand-year millennial reign. He will turn it into a kind of paradise. And then the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem will be activated. I shouldn't say activated. It will come into being by the command of God. And it will be paradise restored. It will be something so beautiful. Beautiful beyond description. Colors so amazing and exquisite that we will see colors in heaven that don't exist here on earth. They existed in Eden. But because of the pollution and everything, they don't exist any longer. But they will come back into being in, in uh, the new earth. We'll see colors. We will see nature in its beauty beyond description. Flowers we've never seen before will bloom before our eyes. Trees and plants that are beautiful and magnificent that actually sing. We will, we will be in the presence of flowers and trees and plants and angels, and fellow believers in Jesus Christ. And we will sing with them as we worship the Lamb upon the throne. But we'll worship the Lamb upon the throne, not only in the throne room of God. We will be singing worship to the Lamb. <clears throat> It'll resonate from our inner beings that have become, become completely sanctified as we uh, move around <clears throat> the new heaven and the new earth. It'll be wonderful beyond description, not boring singing, singing that, that opens the heavens with peace and tranquility and life, a peace that passes all understanding, but it's beyond anything that you've ever experienced down here on earth. It will be a joy that is so deep and so profound. Just imagine becoming one with the joy of God. Just imagine becoming one with Jesus and one with the joy of God, the peace of God, the ecstasy of God, and the holiness of God. You know what that will be like? There's no words to describe what the, that will be like. There, there won't even be a microbe in your entire being. There won't be even one neurological cell <clears throat> or one memory anywhere in your entire being that is separated from this amazing joy 
this amazing presence and this amazing ecstasy and peace that is the presence of God. We, you and I, and all true believers will be, will be we will be one and in unity with God at such a high level. It will be, it will produce a beauty and a joy and openness, a freedom, a liberation that is so, there's no words to describe it. The rivers of the rivers of living water that will be pouring uh, out from under the throne room of God will be so magnificent. And those same rivers of living water, when you understand it through the eyes that God has given you, uh, anointed with the eye salve of Jesus Christ, when you picture <clears throat> the new new uh, earth and the new heaven. And you see the rivers of living water flowing out from beneath the throne room of God. And it's so beautiful, man. It's so beautiful uh, beyond description. And then you will see immediately the, the glory of God. You and I and everybody who has accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior becoming one with the glory and the majesty and the beauty of God. It will be wondrous beyond anything that we can imagine. And then as we're in heaven, we will see and we will experience the, the, the total and complete <clears throat> healing, the total uh, sense of total acceptance by God, an acceptance so deep, an acceptance so profound that we become one with God. And that's why the apostle says in Revelation 21, starting at verse 1, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea, but there would be plenty of, plenty of rivers and gigantic lakes. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Think about that for a moment as the presence of the Lord ministers to you and the Holy Spirit comes upon you with beauty and peace beyond description. Contemplate the words of the Lord. Contemplate what this means for you. And God will wipe away every tear. I'm going to say, it says their eyes. I'm going to read this personally to you. So excuse me. I'm going to take this passage and change it from there to, to you or yours. So that you can hear it from a, a personal sense. God speaking to you directly through prophetic promise from his word. And God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Now look, every one of us down here on earth thirsts, not just for liquid, but we thirst. We're, there's always a sense of not being satisfied, not being complete, not being whole, not being at peace. There's always somewhere in our being some kind of aching, some kind of gnawing. I mean, that's reality, unfortunately. But when we enter heaven, we will be able to drink in the replenishment that really satisfies the rivers of living water. Because Jesus says, I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him or her who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And you have the power of Christ in you. And through faith in the power of Christ, not yourself, you can overcome. I want to say that again. Despite all this talk about this 
power of Satan and the New World Order and all that stuff, I want to say something that's very rock-solid true. Despite every evil thing on earth, despite every adversity here on earth, by your faith in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, whose name is Jesus Christ, by your faith in Christ, you have been given the power to overcome all things. And you have already been given the power to inherit all things. And God says, I will be your God. Excuse me, speaking of, but I want, I want to jump over that one and just say that requires further explanation. Let me go to verse 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murder, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Look, we, we are to, we're not to be ignorant of evil. We're to use spiritual discernment. We need to have our full armor of, of God on because we're involved in a spiritual battle. And, and, and let me remind you, you can pr uh, pray for a fallen angel or pray for Lucifer uh, uh, for an infinite amount of time, and Lucifer and the fallen angels will never repent. Okay, so don't, don't waste your time. But we do pray for those, even these pop singers. We pray for their salvation. And we bind the forces of darkness that emanate from them. But we pray for their salvation, as we would pray for the salvation of anybody. And we pray for their salvation because if God, not if, God can save them. And they would be an influence for Christ to many. But those who are in any area of life, who continue to promote and worship Lucifer and Satanism, and the Antichrist, and things like that. They fit in the category of the cowardly, unbelieving, well, excuse me, the category of the cowardly and unbelieving. That's not the Luciferians. The people who fit in the category of the cowardly and unbelieving are those people who call themselves Christians. Those that fit in the category of the cowardly and unbelieving are those people who call themselves Christians but instead of doing what Jesus Christ asked them to do, and Jesus Christ has given them the power to do in the time that we live in, they have refused to obey the will of God, and they have chosen to be cowardly and unbelieving. They fit into this, this group of people that will be sentenced to fire and brimstone. That's an unpleasant thing to say. But hear the word of the Lord. Verse 8 deals with a description of people, a classification of people that will be in a realm which burns with fire and brimstone. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And let me tell you something. All those people that have chosen to worship Satan and Lucifer, all those people who have chosen to rape, torture, and abuse human beings, women, men, little children, all those people who have secretly conducted horrible evils against their fellow man and the innocent, those that have stolen and ripped off and perverted and abused and tortured and exploited and, and uh, justified all of this because of their, their 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 worship and service of Lucifer and Satan. They are all collectively, including those who are cowardly and unbelieving, they're going to go into the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, okay, for eternity. They're going to perish with Lucifer. They're going to perish with the, the Antichrist and the false prophet. And all those who accepted the mark of the beast are going to go into this cosmic prison in chains where they will burn for all eternity with eternal torment. Now, at the same time, because you can't have evil in heaven or it wouldn't be heaven. At the same time, you and I, 
who have inherited by faith the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the new earth. We notice that there's no temple in the new Jerusalem, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. In the new Jerusalem, it's a magnificent city, and there is no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, and those and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. That's why it's imperative to make disciples. Hear me, please. This is why it is imperative to make disciples of all nations, to make nations operate on the basis of a truth of a biblical worldview from Genesis to Revelation. This is why we are to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. We're supposed to be making, listen, we're supposed to be making disciples of all nations because the outcome is that and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. This is during the millennial rule of Jesus Christ for a thousand years. Do you understand that? what it means? It means what you do now counts for all eternity. It means that you and I are guaranteed entrance into heaven, but we will be rewarded down here on earth at the judgment seat of Christ if we are faithful to Go into all the world and win souls. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Occupy the land until he comes, or occupy our land until he comes, and do kingdom business or do business until he comes. And we use all of our talents that God has given us, all of our abilities, all of our resources, everything that God has given us. We've all been given a lot. We are, and it's not our own, we're accountable to God to use it for his service. That's why when I, when I say um, the purpose of this ministry is to use every medium of communication at our disposal and that we need to complete the television studio ministry because people are audiovisual. And, and then I say that we need to make disciples of all nations, which means communicating the truth of God's word effectively and occupying the land effectively. When I say that, and then I talk about the need for our ministry to use television, acquire television equipment, expand radio, expand the social media, expand the Paradise Mountain Church meetings so they can be uh, televised and live streamed. Those aren't just words. That's my obligation before Jesus Christ to be a, a faithful servant. My command from God, like yours is, is that I have to multiply what he's given me. In other words, if I've been given certain gifts and abilities, I have to multiply the number of people who are saved, the number of people whose lives are changed, the numbers of nations that are saved to what God has given me and teach people how to occupy the land spiritually. I have to multiply. So do you, or I'm not a faithful servant. And that's why when I say you can stand with us, you can partner with us in this multiplication by giving whatever God tells you to give, to this ministry. I'm, I'm very serious. By going to paulmcguire.us and by praying for us, it links directly into this passage where it says, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and honor into it. What we do down here on earth in faithfulness produces a harvest in heaven. It, it's so important to understand that. It's a law of sowing and reaping, and it also causes numerous results and outcome changes down here on earth for you, your family, and your loved ones. Its gates shall not be shut all by day. There shall be no night there, because they don't need a moon. You don't need a sun when you have the glory of God lighting up the place. And... Then it says, and there shall be by no means, there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are, who are whose names are written in the book of the Lamb's book of life. And that happens when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
And then in, in Revelation 22, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. In the middle of, the, of its street on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each free yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb of God shall be in the midst of his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. You know, we talk a lot about the mark of the beast and the mark being on our foreheads, but when we're in heaven, we will see God's face, and his name shall be on our foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Now, listen to those words. They shall reign forever and ever. That means they shall rule. That's you and me and every true believer. You shall rule in heaven forever and ever. Go back to the Garden of Eden. Go back to planet Earth during the time of the Garden of Eden. And God gave Adam and Eve the power to be the rulers over planet Earth. They weren't God, but they had the power to rule under the Creator, capital C. So they, under the Creator, capital C, and they were the creation, a lowercase c. And they ruled and reigned planet Earth. They had authority over Earth. They ruled planet Earth like kings and queens. But the devil stole it from them, and he became the temporary ruler or, or god of this world. That comes to an end when Christ returns. But you, right now, listen to me. You need to hear this. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to 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 thrust this into every dimension of your being so that you will become one with the Word. You say, that's mysticism. No, that's not mysticism. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the Word become flesh. When you become one with the Word, you're becoming one with Jesus. If you abide in Jesus and Jesus abides in you, that's done by abiding in the Word. That's not mysticism. That's the Bible. So you understand under the anointing and revelation of the Holy Spirit that you are an overcomer now in training, that you are destined to, be, to rule and reign as, as uh, princesses and princes and priests and priestesses in the kingdom of heaven, that you are a joint heir with Jesus royally, and that you are more than an overcomer, more than a conqueror, and you will sit next, listen to the word of God. You will sit next to Jesus. You will have, you will sit on a throne in the throne room of God. Hear it? You will sit on a throne in the throne room of God and you will rule and reign. That's why God doesn't want us arguing among ourselves down here in heaven because he said, man, I created you to, to rule and reign with me. You're going to be acting as judges. So, so get over the, the, the two-year-old stuff. And, and begin it now down here on earth. So down here on earth is where you multiply your talents and gifting. Down here on earth is where you choose whether to allow the Holy Spirit to develop you to be more than a conqueror or not. Down here on earth is where you multiply your talents and abilities and where what you do in terms of your talents and abilities brings in a multiplication of souls saved, a multiplication of of disciples being made and a multiplication of people who know how to spiritually in the authority of Jesus Christ, not through lawlessness or violence, take back the land that God gave them through the pilgrims and Puritans. You rule and reign in the supernatural authority of Jesus Christ. You don't allow, you don't sit on your posterior and watch television in a daze while the spirit of Antichrist is coming into our nation and ripping it up and agitating insanity, terrorism, acts of violence, extremis, extremism, madness. And if you allow, listen to me, if you don't put this, this dog from hell on a chain and you don't collar and leash this pit bull from hell called the, the spirit of Antichrist, hear me now, you don't leash and collar this pit bull from hell called the spirit of Antichrist, he will, he will rip up the nation you live in. And then he'll go for you and your children and those that you love. Jesus Christ gave us the power and the supernatural authority over the devil, the demons, and the powers of darkness. 
all those that are part of the true supernatural church of Jesus Christ, we are the body of Christ. And Christ is the head and operating under his direction, which requires that we listen to him. We have the power to tread upon scorpions and serpents. Those represent demonic powers, such as the spirit of Antichrist. We tread upon them, which simply means we take authority over them. We take dominion over them because by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus is the final authority. And it's the name of Jesus that is above every name named on heaven and earth. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So when we pray collectively, when we worship God, when we come boldly to the throne of grace, totally righteousness because we have appropriated the blood of the Lamb upon us, we don't approach Jesus through our good works. We receive his righteousness by faith, and we can ask him for anything in heaven. And where two or more of us agree on earth, it shall be done for us by our Father in heaven. We take authority over the spirit of Antichrist. We begin to pray for uh, high-level officials, those that we like and those that we don't like. We take authority over the spiritual dimension of this nation. And the spiritual dimension of this nation means everything that the Lord begins to uh, give you an understanding with through your spiritual eyes, through your spiritual vision. You'll be able to see things that most Christians think are non-existent because your eyes have been uh, uh, washed and healed by the I salve of the Holy Spirit. You'll have spiritual eyes. You'll be like, listen carefully, you'll be like Elijah's servant, who when all of the people who claim to be the people of God, all of the people who claim to be the people of God, who are clueless, all of the people of God who claim to be the people of God, who were clueless in the time of Elijah, and the king of Syria was moving forward with a mighty army, with chariots. And the king, is, king of Syria's massive army was going to slaughter the armies of the people of God. And Elijah's servant completely had a panic attack. He completely had a meltdown. He freaked out. And then Elijah, who had a prophetic anointing, a supernatural prophetic anointing from the Most High God, said to God, Open his eyes, open my servant's eyes. And in an instant, the Lord God Almighty opened the eyes of Elijah's servant. And Elijah's servant said, Behold, the hills are filled with chariots of fire, and those that be with us are more than those that be with them. And he understood that there was a fundamental difference in the reality that he was able to perceive with his physical human eyes, which excluded the reality of an overwhelming presence of the angelic armies and the chariots of fire. That's why he had a meltdown. But when the Spirit of God touched his eyes and he was able to see into the spiritual world, he saw that in a different dimension, but this dimension which rules over the physical dimension, God had already sent an overwhelming force multiplier, a massive army, a massive numbers of angelic armies that were so great, along with military equipment like chariots of fire, that outnumbered the armies of the Syrian king, his chariots and his soldiers. And the Syrian king and his armies were slaughtered and fled and were in terror. But the, the, the game changer was Elijah's servant could see spiritually. And so you too need to educate yourself, pray, read, study, so that you can see the battle spiritually. See, that's how you're an overcomer. You're an overcomer because when Goliath comes marching down the street, you're not having a panic attack and, and hiding with all the mighty men of Israel who really didn't turn out to be so mighty after all because they were hiding. You are of the same spirit as David. Goliath comes, and instead of panicking, instead of giving into a spirit of fear, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You recognize that you have to use spiritual weapons to, to overcome a spiritual giant. You don't use physical earthly weapons to overcome a spiritual giant. Goliath. So he, David neglected the expensive armor of Saul, who had the armor of the flesh, and he took for him 
that which was needed for him by the spirit, which was his slingshot and some stones, as he was anointed of the Holy Spirit. And he went before Goliath, and under the powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit, he boldly declared, How dare you defy the armies of the living God? And the whole earth shuddered as he made this declaration of faith. And then as Goliath was going to continue to mock him, David slew him with one slingshot. The stone hit his forehead. Goliath dropped. David grabbed his sword, chopped the head of Goliath off, held up the giant's head to the Philistine army that were getting ready to slaughter the armies of Israel. And the Philistine army fleed, and the battle changed. In both uh, biblical illustrations, the battle changed when there was a recognition on the part of at least one person, when there was a recognition that the power belonged to God, either through angelic armies and chariots of fire, or the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural ability to slay Goliath with one stone. You see, and as you look at all these problems, your personal problems, your family problems, your relational problems, your job problems, every problem you have, your key to victory, your key to overcoming is in this and this thing only. You will understand through the revelation power of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, as some of you are right now, as the Spirit of God is quickening your inner man or woman supernaturally, you will understand in your inner being, you will know with 100% certainty that you are now victorious over the problems that were, were oppressing you in the back of your mind before you started to listen to the beginning of this program, the Paul McGuire Report. But now, after listening to the Paul McGuire Report, not because Paul McGuire is, is some guru, but because of the Spirit of the Lord ministers to people when we get out of the way and allow them to do it. The Spirit of God has set you free from the bondage of fear, and you have the supernatural knowing in your inner man or inner woman that you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, and that God has already, listen, God has already given you the victory supernaturally to defeat the problems, and the adversaries that have been tormenting you. You see, you were in torment before. You were in agony before as you were rehashing your mind over and over again these problems and worrying and going into anxiety. And, and you were like, that's spiritual warfare, by the way. But the quickening of the Holy Spirit has been released in your being right now. And with the quickening of the Holy Spirit, there's been an implanting of the reality of the promise of God, and that is that you have authority over whatever you pray for in Jesus' name, and whatever it is that you've been dealing with, you have defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. So you walk now victoriously. It's not a matter of how you feel. You just you just say, God, I'm going to bank on it and stop all the thoughts contrary to the fact that you're victorious. Man, the power of the Holy Spirit is good. It's just amazing when the power of God descends. That The very atmosphere is changed when the power of God, the power of victory descends into our presence, into our hearts, into our rooms. And yes, the power of God can descend upon America and France and Great Britain and any other nation where the people worship the Lord, and are open to the infusion of his power from on high. We don't have to stand here naked and ashamed. The, the, the chaos you see, it can be ended. It can be ended. We have to take authority over it. We have to leash and collar this pit bull. We do it together. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're anointing people supernaturally to teach, educate, and equip people to take authority over the spirit of Antichrist and every demonic power that confronts their nation, their families, their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Help me get this word out. This is important. This is called mission possible, not mission impossible. There's nothing impossible with God. Help me and this ministry continue to move this message forth and to utilize 
broadcast television, reach the people that are into visuals. We need to acquire broadcast quality cameras, editing equipment, crew, all kinds of things. We need to to expand the radio outreach, the broadcasting of radio and television over internet, over Facebook, over YouTube, um, and many other uh, Christian networks. And we can do that with your help. So I'm asking you to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I believe that I'm victorious in all things. I'm going to uh, pray for Paul McGuire, his family, and uh, the ministry. And I'm going to ask you, God, what do you want me to do to further partner with Paul? And then simply whatever the Lord asks you to do, do. And do it with a cheerful and joyous heart. Help us spread the word of this program, by the way. Send this program as God leads you to your friends and those that need it. And you can do that by going to paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. And um, we have social media apps, iTunes, YouTube, uh, RSS, Blueberry, SoundCloud, and many other social media apps. People can listen to this program on their cell phone or laptop or wherever they want, headphones, whatever they want to do. And we want, look, we have to do this with the television part of it too. Because, I, you know, a lot of people aren't going to sit home and watch it on television. They're going to be <laughs> watching it on their laptop or their uh, cell phone or whatever. Okay, so we have to go to where the people are, and especially people who are in different nations in the world. Together, we can change the spiritual battle. So join with me. And um, I appreciate every one of you that write me, write me. I tried to read most of what is sent to me personally. I do answer a lot of people. I can't promise to answer everybody. It's just too much. But I do pray on a regular basis. I will select names of people who have written or names of people who decided to donate. And no, you don't have to donate for me to pray for some situation. And emails I pray over personally as often as I can. And I want you to know that. And I read the, the notes and I appreciate those also. Uh, I know many of you, but I don't, I don't, I'm not, I have not necessarily met you face to face, but I know many of you and I appreciate uh, your prayers and uh, the things that you have said. Uh, you have no idea how much I appreciate it. So together, let's remember what the Word of God said. Uh, we weren't called to be in a time of despair. We're here on a mission. God's angels will protect us if we call upon him. He'll, he'll help us. He'll supply our needs. He'll, he'll either heal us or give us the power to endure or bless the wisdom of our doctors. And dear Lord, the Lord needs to bless the wisdom of our doctors. But he will. We pray for him. And remember, nothing is impossible with God. And it doesn't. you don't have to be some super giant. You just have to have a mustard seed of faith. So go to paulmcguire.us. If you believe or God's speaking to you, about somebody, then, then 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 send them this program. You know, um, we list our Paradise Mountain Church local services on the website. Uh, those that come regularly know the reason why for that, and you're welcome to join us. Um, I'll be posting the conference special soon. I'm, I'm behind on that, but I'll be doing that. And remember, visit paulmcguire.us. There is one other thing I wanted to say to you, and that is. Oh, this is what I wanted to say to you. As you walk around and do your, your daily return, uh, routines or whatever, you know, you don't, this is not like some super spiritual thing, but try to listen to the Lord. Because the Lord is always talking to us. And sometimes we don't listen. And the Lord may communicate to you in a way that is, is an unusual way for him to communicate to you. But you'll understand it because he designed the communication specifically to get through to you. So you'll get it. Just be open to him. And always make sure that whatever you think the Lord is saying to you is backed up by the word of God. And then ask God specifically on how to solve problems. Don't, don't think it's mundane. Don't think you're wasting God's time. You know, get intimate with God. I mean, be specific. God, you know, whatever it is, Lord, help me to solve this problem. Show me what to do here. I mean, get real specific. And then you keep praying that and you keep committing that to him. Um, 
and he'll he he will solve it. Uh, I I I had a series of dreams with the same theme. If I told you the theme, you'd probably start laughing. <laughs> this 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 it was kind of a nightmare. And again, if I told you the theme, it's just it, it sounds like it's so stupid. You'd, you'd start laughing, and I wouldn't blame you for laughing. I laugh, but it's like finally the Lord spoke to me and said, "Paul, the reason you're having this recurring theme is because this sequence that you keep having in this dream over and over again represents such and such." And I said, "Oh, Lord." It represents that, huh? Okay, so then I, got, I finally got a clue from the Lord. I began to pray. I said, God, remove that stronghold from my life. Show me how to solve that problem. Because, you see, the Lord didn't, the Lord allowed me to have this recurring dream. And then the Lord spoke to me about it. He did that for a reason. He did that because he was pointing out to me something that, uh, was below the surface of my personality and my subconscious, something I wasn't aware of that he wanted uh, me to solve. But I wasn't aware of it. And then the Lord brought it to my attention, and then I've been asking the Lord to show me how to solve it, and I believe that he will, because the Lord didn't bring it to my attention for no reason at all. And so the Lord speaks to you through so many ways. Be open to it. Just be open to it. And keep walking with the Lord. And tell the Lord. Just speak to the Lord like a friend. Obviously, he's God. You worship him. And never, never allow the fact that you have committed a sin or have sinned to stand between you and the Lord getting together. Okay? I'm really serious about that. Don't think you can come to the Don't think that you can't come to the Lord because he's going to be mad at you because of what you did. You simply ask God for forgiveness. You ask God to cleanse you with the blood of Jesus. And if need be, you ask God to give you the power to be victorious in this area or whatever area. But the key thing is you never allow sin to keep you from God. That's what the devil wants. God will forgive you. And you say, well, I keep committing the same sin. Okay, fine. Keep coming to the Lord and keep asking him to forgive you and ask him to give you the power and ability to have victory over it, but don't stop coming to the Lord. He'll always receive you. God bless you. I'm Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. Mm -hmm.